Hey everyone, in this video I'm going to show you how I make my macros animations or product animations and so on. So I've been getting some questions about how to do this or that, like very specific movements, for example how to do the breathing animation or like jumping or backflip animation or door opening and closing. And those are very specific movements, those are very specific animations and I don't want to make videos about them separately. So what I thought is I would make a video where I talk about how I make my animations and the methods that I use. And trust me, the methods that I use are pretty simple and they help me to produce a lot of animations in a very short amount of time. So I'm going to cover everything in this video. Also, this video will be very simple. I'm not going to do the flashy editing with like cool transitions and text because I don't have time for that. I got other things to take care of. So I want to get straight to the point. And also a quick disclaimer, those methods that I'm going to show you in this video are something that I use personally for my YouTube channel and they might not be the most professional stuff. So if you're a professional working in like a movie industry or game development industry, maybe those tips aren't for you. But if you're a YouTuber or you're creating content and animations for your other platforms, then the stuff that I'm going to show you in this video will be useful for you. So without wasting any more time, let's jump right in. So the very first thing, the very first tip that I'm going to give you is using references. Now, you might have heard this a million times, but I'm going to remind you again to use references. So I'm not going to just give you a theory. I'm going to show you what I basically do. So before I want to make an animation, for example, I want to make a jumping animation, right? What I do is I just go to Google. So if I want to make like a jumping animation, I just go to Google and type jumping animation reference. And then I really, really like using the images. You can use videos as a reference. You can use real life footage as a reference. But what I like to do is open up some images. For example, this one on Pinterest. This is like a very good jumping animation. I actually used it for this animation over here. And what it does is it basically helps you to look at the image and understand how you should pose your character. You can start with this pose, go forward like five keyframes, do this pose, do this pose and so on. And then after you're finishing, you can just move the keyframes around. For example, maybe five frames is too fast. You can do eight frames and so on. So I have this keyframe set over here. For example, the animation lasts for like 45 frames. So it's a little bit more than one second. So it's uh, very easy if you do that. And you don't have to be a slave to the reference. You can just go outside the box as well. You can just change up some poses. Uh, and then you can also get feedback. And maybe some people will tell you that this is not as good. And you can just change up some stuff. So just basically use references. You can use videos and images. But don't be afraid to think outside the box as well and change up some stuff. Now the second tip that I want to show you is reusing some of the animations. So while we're on this jumping animation, what I wanted to do is after I finished my jumping animation, I did a few more animations. And then I wanted to do a backflip. So I went to Google again, obviously, and then type backflip animation reference. Then I just type backflip animation reference. And then there are a lot of backflip animation image references. You can use this one, you can use this one as well. Just use whatever you want. And you can also use videos once again. But I like to do images because I have a second screen. So I can just drag and drop this on my second screen and just watch it while I'm animating. And if you don't have a second screen, you can just open it and then minimize it and then open it again while you're animating or you can just also open some images on your phone put it in front of your desk and just look at it look at your screen and then look at your phone at the same time that can work as well but if you have a second screen it's going to be more comfortable for you so instead of remaking the backflip from scratch what i did is i copied this jumping animation i just copied the entire collection hit this collection renamed it whatever and then I just readjusted some of the poses. I animated the flip bone and then I followed the reference once again and adjusted the poses accordingly. And that way I didn't have to remake the animation from scratch. I just copied and pasted the jumping animation, added the flip animation, flip bone animation, changed up some poses and I think it turned out pretty cool. And I did the same thing obviously with the walk cycles. So I have the walk cycle two over here, which is the main my walk cycle I did for my tutorial. And then I wanted to do my more simple, minimalistic walk cycle, which I'm going to use on more characters. This one. So I just copied this walk cycle, changed up some poses, copied, pasted them with the mirrored pose, and that's it. Also, I did the sneaking walk cycle. Let me find it. I don't know where it is. Should be down somewhere over here. Oh, no, it's actually up. So yeah, the sneak walk, I did the same thing. I copied the walk cycle, and then I did the sneak walking animation. Also, another is an example of reusing. I have this sword attack animation where the character attacks someone with a sword. So basically this one is like a very basic sword swinging animation. And then I also wanted to do a mining animation where the character mines the block. So what I did is I just basically copied and pasted this one, changed the tools, changed some poses, 
And then I got this animation over here of the character mining. And also, I made a bow and arrow throwing tutorial over here. And then in the bow and arrow tutorial, if you watched it, I didn't polish the animation. I just showed you guys the basics of using the dynamic parent. So what I did is I just, um, I wanted to make a bow and arrow animation. So I just appended this collection of the animation, which is unfinished. And then I polished it up and I got something like this. I have this instantly shooting animation. And then I have this animation where the character holds and then shoots. So this is me basically telling you to don't be afraid to reuse the animation if it makes sense, you know. If you think the previous animations and movement are going to go well with the new animation, you can just reuse them and save some time. Now my third tip is getting feedback. So getting feedback about your art is very important. So don't be afraid to go around, post your art and ask people for feedback. But also remember to be respectful and if other people post it and ask something, then don't overlap that. Obviously that goes without saying. Also. Don't bother people if they don't want if they don't want to give you feedback, then don't force them to give you feedback. Just make sure to contact some people who are like close to you, who are willing to give feedback, who are very good at their craft as well. And then feel free to post your work and then ask for feedback. And also don't be afraid to take like harsh criticism as well. Some people might give you harsh feedback, which actually might be a good thing. So you can improve with that as well. So you might have a good eye, you might have good skills, but there are some things that you might be missing. So showing people your work and then them pointing out the stuff that they think of is very good as well. And now my fourth and final tip is practice. You have to just sit down and do a lot of animations. Whether it's 30 minutes a day, one hour a day, a few hours per week, doesn't matter. If you want to do like multiple animations, if you're working on projects and also doesn't have to be Minecraft, you can just sit down and do some animations and then practice. You should, you should train that muscle. And the more you do it, the better you're going to get at it. So you shouldn't always watch like step by step tutorials because there's not going to be a tutorial for everything. So you might want to do a specific stuff, but then you're going to get stuck on it. So what I recommend is practice, watch the references, get feedback and then practice again and do that cycle over and over again. And trust me, you're going to improve. I'm on my improvement stage as well, but I'm just practicing a lot, watching references. I'm trying to get feedback as well from my friends and from my colleagues. And yeah, hopefully the next time you want to do like a door closing or door opening animations. Let me see. I think I have some of them over here. I have the door close or over this here the character is just closing the door and i actually couldn't find references for this one and yeah uh what i wanted to mention as well there might not be a reference for everything so you could just come up with something in your head at this very simple door closing animation and uh, this door opening animation what i actually did is i did the door opening animation first and then i copied this and then i just uh, copied the animation in a mirrored pose so the way you can do that is you can just select everything like select all of your keyframes press on s then x minus one and then this is going to scale your animation on the minus one axis or x on the x axis on minus one value so it's just basically gonna, it's basically going to flip your animation now you can move your keyframes on the proper keyframes over here on frame zero and now you can see the character is doing like the opposite motion over here if i just hide the door Instead of opening, the character is basically closing the door. And I readjusted some of the poses, and then I got something like this. So I just don't be afraid to play around, do some stuff with the keyframes, change them up, change the timing, change the poses, just do whatever works for you. And also, one thing I want to mention as well is don't, don't spend like too much time polishing your animation. It doesn't have to be perfect, especially if you're doing this for your own project. Uh, it doesn't have to be perfect. You're going to get better in time. And the something that I mentioned in my previous video where I talk about how to avoid laziness is I talk about volume and not perfection. And this is something that I learned from Blender Guru's video who mentions that volume is better than perfection, especially when you're first starting out. So I hope these tips will help you in making your animations, being more confident. I hope after this video, you're going to feel more confident just sitting down and creating your own custom animations, just creating whatever you imagine in your head or whatever you need in your project. Also, if you're new here, be sure to subscribe because I make a Blender and Minecraft animation tutorials every week. And also, I post some of my own animations. Actually, right now, I'm working on a large animation series about Steve. And this is the animations that I made for that. I just created an animation library. And speaking of animation library, if you want to create this amazing animation library, which allows you to drag and drop and reuse the animations, then you can check out this video on the right side. And I will see you there. Thank you for watching.